Welcome to this video series all about the database exam on the BTEC Level 3 program. Over the course of these videos we're going to look at the Part A exam and look at the activities that are found within it. The activities that we're going to be going to look at are the relationship diagram and how it allows us to structure our proposal the tables and structures and validation that we're going to use inside our databases. We're going to create some queries and reports and we're going to do some testing and finally evaluation. So let's just jump in and see our data set that we get provided when we open up our exam paper. As you can see from the example in figure one, we get given a flat file database that's got a number of columns with headings in them. Underneath these columns we'll find our data set. You may also notice that some of the content in this data set is duplicated or even triplicated. So what we're hoping to achieve in our first activity is how we can create a series of tables that reduces this duplication of data and allows us to create what's known as a relationship. The relationship will be between the tables and allow us to reduce the amount of opportunities where we're going to be duplicating data and it will allow us to also cascade our information up and down when we delete and update any records later. So this is all to do with our data integrity and how we can maintain our data integrity throughout our databases. We're going to be using a structure that will allow us to make sure that we are able to call these database names and fields later on in any queries that we're going to produce. Our first step in this task is to do what's known as normalization. Normalization is where we look at the field information that we've got and look at the content within the data set. As you'll be able to see in the table, we can see that there are a number of fields that have ID at the end of them. These are a very good way to work out that we're going to have at least three tables within inside our access database. These IDs represent what are known as primary keys. Even in this instance, they may be duplicating themselves. What we'll be doing is creating three additional tables in order for us to fill this information in so that we can then remove the duplication of those data later. So let's look at the customer type ID section. You'll notice that there are three values inside these sections, one, two, and three. And if we look on the column beside that where it says customer type, we can also see that there is some text that says guest of organizer, regular, new. These are the values that are linked to the customer type IDs. And we could reduce the amount of information that's in this table by just simply linking the customer type ID. So this in itself identifies itself as a separate table. This is fairly straightforward and obvious. However, some places within a table may not be obvious. So if we look at our customer ID section, we can always think of what the customer ID would be all about. Is it about a person? As we can see in our table, we can see that there is some identified information about a person, and this will be their first name or forename, their surname, and we could also attach their telephone number as this relates to them as well. So in this instance, we should look at removing the customer ID, the forename, surname, and telephone numbers, and placing these inside their own table. The next table that we will look at doing and look at creating is the ticket type ID table. We have a section for ticket type ID that runs one through to three. We can also see that there is a column that talks about ticket types being on different days, Friday, Saturday, and camping. We can also see that the prices of these tickets are also linked together. So in this next table, we would want to take out ticket type ID, ticket cost, and ticket type, and place these in their own table too. Once we've gone through the normalization process, we may need to look again and move to the next step within normalization, where we look at where we place what's known as a foreign key. 
A foreign key is a primary key taken from another table, which allows us to establish a link between the tables themselves. So in our instance of our database here, we will need to make sure that we have foreign keys that link to not only the individual that's purchased the ticket, the ticket type, and the customer type, but we also need to identify what ticket number that they are. So as you can see, we will have a fourth table. In this fourth table, we're going to take some of the primary keys out and use them as foreign keys. So the first one we're going to look at is customer ID, taking that out of the customer table. Then we want to make sure what ticket type we're using. So we're going to take the ticket type ID out of the ticket type. Then we've got to think about the primary key that's going to appear in this table. We need to take the ticket number as our ID and we'll place this as our primary key. Then we take our final foreign key out of the customer type table and place this inside of the customer table. Now that we've worked out what our tables will be inside of our database, we're going to need to move on to the next stage, which is making sure that we've got our table structures correct and any validation that needs to be included with them present on each of the fields.